Good morning to Common Life Church. Uh, today is Monday, August 16th, and we are on day nine of the Bible reading plan, Facing the Future with God. And Mondays are usually Pastor Lee's day, uh, but he's on vacation, so I'm stepping in for him this morning. So that means you guys get the joy of having me today and tomorrow. Okay, well, maybe that's not a joy, right, depending on who you ask. But anyways, right, the theme for today, uh, for day nine, is anticipating anticipating the day of the Lord. And we are tasked with reading Luke chapter 1, verses 68, 69, and then 78. All right, so that's Luke chapter 1, verses 68, 69, and then 78. And I'm just going to read it all in one shot, all right? So if you can follow along with me, that's great. If not, totally okay. But this is what it says. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, in the house of his servant David, because, this is verse 78, because of the tender mercy of God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high. Amen. All right. And so, you know, throughout the Old Testament, prophets spoke of the day of visitation of God. And it was seen, you know, sometimes as a day of great comfort and, and rejoicing, and at other times as a day of great distress and judgment. You know, in reality, it was a matter of how Israel had been behaving and following the Lord's commands that determined how they anticipated or feared that day. And so, for example, if they were, you know, living life, being obedient to God and, and following His commandments, then the, then the visitation of God, right? the day of visitation of God would be something that they anticipated with, with, great, joy, with, with, with great joy. And you know, that's a result of them trusting God. But if Israel was you know, being rebellious, being complainers, and you know, not uh, following God's commands or upholding His statutes, the visitation of God, right? the day of visitation of God would be something that would be dreaded. And for us as Christians, as followers of Christ who are facing the future with God, our visitation of God will come in the form of Christ's second coming. Because that's our hope, right? That's what keeps us going and that's what motivates us to be faithful, as, as faithful as we can. And when we fail, which is going to happen at times, it's what keeps us running to God, not away from Him. And so when it comes to the day of visitation of God, how might you be anticipating that day? Or what is it about it that you are anticipating? You see, when we look at today's scripture, Luke chapter 1, that actually starts with verse 37 and onward. It's actually referencing uh, Zechariah's prayer or or, or prophecy or praise of prayer, whatever you want to describe it. In the Greek, it, it is often referred to as the Benedictus, and that, that means blessed be. You see, Zechariah begins uh, this prophecy with much praise to God, right, to the God of Israel. Right? He's he's pumped up. He's ecstatic. Right? He has so much to be thankful for. Right? Especially when it comes to the birth of his son, right? Who would be known as John the Baptist. Right? He's so thankful and full of praise because the God of Israel has visited and redeemed his people, and. And also the plan that God has for his son. You see, the Greek word for he has visited uh, is episkesato. And and it means to, you know, look upon, to visit, or, you know, to look out, or even select. But essentially what that means is that God's visiting, right, with purpose and favor. uh, God's visitation and favor upon them is to redeem them. And redemption meant liberation. Liberation meant freedom. And so we can see why Zechariah would be so full of praise. right? And the reason why is because God has not forgotten them. God has not forsaken them. Instead, he has continually proved himself faithful. And in verse 69, he says, He has raised up a thorn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And the thorn, the horn of salvation isn't coming from the birth of his son, but he knows that his son will play a major part in the announcing of that 
horn of salvation through the lineage of David. And if we're connecting dots, right, if we're connecting dots throughout the Old Testament and, and genealogies, right, we know that to be Jesus. So this is what our author says in regards to Jesus, especially in this, in this particular context, right? He says, The New Testament calls Jesus the bishop of our souls. He is the bishop incarnate, right? His visit to this world has changed the course of history. The initial visit of our heavenly bishop was cloaked in mystery. He came not as a military general, but as a baby in a rock hone manger. But he came to care for our souls. He came to see our situation. He came with divine blessing and redemption. Right? Notice, it's a God who sees us, God who looks out for us, who selects us, who comes with favor. But he also came with a divine warning. He continues with our bishop announced to the world that at some future date he would make a second visit. He promises to appear once more to review his troops. And so for those who who love his coming, his next visit will be an occasion of unspeakable joy and glory. At that visit, the consummation of this his bishop's task will be complete. You know, earlier we talked about how the day of visitation of God would either be a day of rejoicing or a day of distress, right? Depending on how you have been you know, living your life. And the same goes for us, right? Will we be ecstatic when Christ returns or will it be a day of great distress? You see, if we are celebrating the great mercy God has shown to us, mentioned in verse 78, then Christ's return will be a great day. But the, day, but the days leading up to it will also be great because we are living in His mercy. Right? We're celebrating it. We're basking in His love. However, if we are living outside of His grace, and we're living outside of His mercy, then Christ's second coming, right, the return of Christ, right, His, right, His second coming will be no bueno for us. That means no good, just in case you don't know. And so what should be a, a day of great joy will end up being a day of distress and essentially eternal judgment. But here's the thing. You know, I pray that in our anticipation of that day that we would use today, that we would use tomorrow, and that we would take advantage right, of all the days leading up to that time to really enjoy God's mercy, to live in His grace, and continue to face the future with God. Because our God is not a God who has forgotten us. But our God is a God who has never forsaken us. He looks down and He sees us. And He wants us to live not only in His love, but to live in His mercy as well. And so, as our author says, Thank God for the unspeakable joy and glory that awaits you in the day of the Lord. Until next time, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that you would have a blessed Monday today. May you go in peace. Amen and amen.